Our first uh, speaker here is uh, Arzina Amir, and uh, is a professional agrologist who specializes in food security issues. She has a bachelor's degree in crop science and a master's degree in sustainable agriculture, and has worked abroad for many years uh, as a CUSO volunteer in Thailand, and as a researcher in Jamaica, India, and Bangladesh. Arzina's presentation will be on small farm big impact. We'll describe how the sharing farm in Richmond was created, has created an entire food system change. 2,300. So there were individuals who liked coming and just giving back, like the Greenhouse Social Club. But the bulk of that 2,300 came from the corporate volunteers. Now the only issue with corporate volunteers is it tends to be a very one-off thing. They want to do a day of caring. This is not a sustained every month kind of thing, although there are certain groups that will, will do that. And then we have the Greenhouse Social Club that meets on a regular basis. Funding. So what does it cost to run a farm like this? The budget has been fairly stable for the last few years. It's about $80,000. However, the group started off in 2007 when I started working for them, 100% grant dependent. And the United Way was their main source of operating funds. However, in about 2008, 2009, after the crash, the United Way totally changed, at least in the lower mainland, and took the focus away from food security. And it went from providing about $20,000 of funds every year to zero. That was a huge cost to absorb. So some changes had to happen. The Sharing Farm is also the member of the Richmond Food Security Society, one of, was one of the founding members, which helped to really attract Montlain University to start a farm school. And that farm school then provides 15 interns that help grow much of that food that goes to the food bank and all of the other. The Greenhouse Social Club also started food preservation workshops because many of them came with skills uh, around food preserving and they wanted to give back. So when there is excess at the farm, they will do workshops on tomato canning and making jam and dehydrating, all that kind of stuff. In addition, the sharing farm also provides many of the schools in Richmond with seedlings. Because one of the issues with schools is that their Curriculum time is the opposite of, often of what the growing season is. And the crops that can grow and provide kids with vegetables through the winter need to be started in June and July when many of the schools are out. So a lot of 500 approximately seedlings go out. So already you're starting to see some of the ripple effects. This is just a three acre farm. But, you know, the ripple effects on the food system in Richmond have been incredible. And I'm still not showing you everything, but maybe through pictures. Um, often we who work in the nonprofit world wonder, how can we attract young people? We're always constantly wanting to have that new energy. Well, part of it came from hiring young interns, um, because when you have young people, they bring their friends, they you know, they do attract other young people. Having the farm school interns there also really helps. But being open to ideas. Uh, Shane is on the left. Um, one year said, you know, there's this really cool thing called permaculture, and I want to try some sheet mulching. And this was, I think, back in 2003 or four. None of us had heard of them. What the hell is that? But we said yes, and he did it and brought a whole bunch of his friends and they were trying it out. It's giving, giving up some of the control, but allowing the space to be used as the community wants to use it. Um, the sweet peas. So they've migrated from just being sold in a bucket at the end of the driveway. Save on Foods is actually just around the corner in Terra Nova. And one of the staff people approached him and said, hey, would you like to sell sweet peas for the sharing farm? We have lots, and um, you know, we can't always sell them from the growth side stand. We're way back at the end. And it's emerged into this amazing partnership 
Back in 2011, sweet pea sales alone were giving the farm almost $800. It's probably over a thousand, much higher than that now. And I noticed they also up the price. It used to be just two dollars a, a bun, and seeing four bucks there. So, but you can see it's like the sharing farm because everybody knows what the sharing farm is now. And Save on Foods is really embracing that this is they're a partner now with this farm that's just around the corner, provides food for the food bank. So. Sweet peas sell out. And can you imagine if this is at the front of the store, walking in and smelling all the sweet peas? It's, it's amazing. And then this is just a, a show of the farm school students. This is actually this year's cohort, which are graduating in a couple of weeks. Um, so this is the fourth year that um, graduates have come out of this program. Some have stayed to farm in Richmond, and some have gone uh, across the province to, to begin farming. So, in terms of opportunities for employment, farm employs one full time and the rest are part time. There are 50 farm school interns. And then, since 2002, I mean, the farm has um, been able to train and provide experience for 25 interns. There are also opportunities at the farm if you have a skill, you want to hold a workshop. The farm doesn't charge anything, but allows you to do like a workshop on whatever you want. Um, just recently I saw a welding workshop for farmers. It's a local uh, young woman who just finished her welding course wanted to show farmers how to weld. So, yeah, perfect. There are also amazing opportunities for community building. So I'm going to go back to that budget, $80,000. How do you make $80,000? Well, grant writing will only get you so far. How many grant writers in there? Yeah, you know, you're hitting up constantly. The issue with grants is generally project-based, right? You need to come up with a new project. You know, you have to constantly be innovating and selling. Very difficult to find funds for poor operating expenses, like your farm manager, stuff that happens every year. So right away, the group realized that we need to fundraise ourselves without the strings attached from having a new program. In. One of the first ways we figured that out was through garlic. <laughs> so, garlic um, is a wonderful crop in terms of a cash fundraiser. And the first year, we grew maybe you know, two size community garden beds of garlic, and we made $700. And right away, we all were like, oh, wow, that worked really well. So, second year, we increased double that, so we made about almost $2,000. We now, the farm now holds a garlic festival, and this was the fifth year that they held them. They made almost $15,000 garlic. Because not only do they do garlic, they pickle the skates and sell them in these fancy bottles. They do garlic braids, and they do garlic workshops. And then they sell the herb, dried herbs on the side. The marketing program at the, at the uh, farm has now gone amazing, but it started off just with just plain and simple garlic. And you know, because it's for a good cause, people don't bat an eye when it's three dollars a bulb for a bulb of garlic. So the garlic crop, although some of it goes to the food bank, it's pri the primary um, fundraiser for the farm. There is also an apple palooza. So for those of you who are in the fruit tree project, what Richmond noticed was in 2005, the amount of fruit tree donations started to tank. And we started looking, calling all the original fruit tree owners. Well, the owners had either sold a place or the house had been redeveloped and there were no fruit trees left there anymore. So we noticed this was a, a, an ongoing uh, decline in fruit tree population. So again, partnership with Pontland University, uh, we planted an orchard on one of the acres. And so every year, there is an apple palooza. So this is a, and it was news to some people that Richmond could grow apples. Because quite frankly, everyone thinks everyone, you gotta grow apples in the Okanagan. Well, no. This region, and even the island, was apple self-sufficient. We were exporting apples. 